the RPMs drop right off. Now another thing I always do, I only work on one carburetor at a time. And I never have, I never have the, the chance that I'm going to mismatch parts or put the wrong cap. Well, today what I wanted to do, I wanted to share some information about jetting the RD. It's supposed to rain on and off all day, kind of waited for this day for a while. But I was thinking last night, I was trying to plan this out in my mind, if it rained today, and it looks like it's going to rain all day. I wanted to take and, and explain why and how I do the jetting. Now, believe me, if you look out on YouTube, there's people that know a hundred times more than I do, and they've made good videos of how to do the jetting, the needle, and that. Everybody's got their own little way. It's like making a pizza. Some people it's pepperoni, some it's, uh, you know, gavilta fish. But I have a way that's worked for me. Now, let me tell you why it worked for me, and you're going to laugh. This is a short story. I know sometimes these stories get a little... But this is a true story. Ray Straubel remember this like it was yesterday. How did I learn about jetting? There was a time when I had a bunch of motorcycles, and I didn't know anything about jetting. I bought a motorcycle. I rode it, mostly dirt bikes. And then I had this bike that I bet a lot of old timers will remember. What a great bike, a Kawasaki Green Streak, a 100cc dirt bike. And it was, it, for the time, it had way more power than, say, a Hodaka or something like that. So anyway, this is a great story. We had just started going to Amar races, and I believe, but I could be wrong, Ray and I both had bull tacos, or he sold me his bull taco, or I sold him my bull taco. There's, we, neither one of us know about any of that. We, we can never remember when we sit down. But it all started with the bull tacos, and then I had this brilliant idea. I said, since we're running in a 125 class, I could run my 100cc Kawasaki Green Street. All I need is street tires, this will be great. I'll get a sprocket, so it'll go, you know, whatever. And, and in this class, every bike was a mishmash. There were, there were some pretty ugly bikes in this class. But Amar ran by class and by CCs, and that was very cool. But now this, I know this story might go on, but it's worth listening to this story because you can learn from this. I learned from this. This changed my whole, my whole approach to motorcycling. So at the time, I think it was Freddie Anderson, Fast Freddie, who's passed on recently. And Fast Freddie said, if you're going to ride on this track, you know, Bridgehampton, it's got a big straightaway, and I, da, 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 that you're going to have to up the main jet. And I said, oh, man, I don't want to, I want to ride the bike. I don't want to go through, ah, take the carburetor off. So I outsmarted him. I said, I don't. This, I rode this bike for, for a year. I never had to change the main jet, but now I'm going out on the track on Bridgehampton. Well, this green streak was a very, very cool bike. I, to this day, I remember that little short handlebars and this the side-mounted carburetor and everything. And I go out on a track and I'm saying, man, these other bikes in a 125 class, oh man, man, I got the fastest bike out here. This is the coolest thing in the world. Holy, because we were not professional racers. We were having fun. We were farmers. So, so anyway, I, I come in I, after one ride around a track. I don't know, practice them at time or whatever. And Freddie says, did you change the main jet? I said, no. He says, you better change the main jet. It's going to warm up this afternoon. And I don't know. I didn't listen, of course. What the hell could he know? He's only been racing 50 years, and I'm here for 20 minutes. Ah, who's the smartest guy out on track today? So anyway, I get my green streak, and we go for the uh, the, the next practice session, and it, it seizes up. And it had a hole in the piston. You, you could reach in and, and grab the crankshaft through the hole in the piston. So I learned my lesson about jetting. Lesson one is if somebody's been doing something for a long time and they know what the hell they're doing, it's a good idea to listen to them. Number two, jetting, if you're wrong, it's better to be a little rich than a little lean if you're going to go to a track day. Now, on a street bike, it's totally different. And this is why I think it's worth sharing this information today, using up a no riding day. A bike like an RD, and this, this goes on like a political speech, a bike like an RD never really runs on the razor edge. You always try to favor it being a little on the rich side. Just one jet on the end, one needle notch on the rich side. Because you're out 100 miles from home, or like the other day I was going, going through the back roads, 
I don't want to seize the bike up. If you're at the track, you know, you can push the bike back to the pits. But when you're riding on the street, it ruins your whole day. It ruins the other guy's day. And in fact, the last time Joe Roselli and I rode down to Charlie's, I seized up the RD. And I, he's got a thousand cc by a big bike anyway. And we're going up hills at 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour or whatever. And it seized. And so... I, by the way, I'll show that piston later. I saved the piston. That, that's, a, that's a good one. But anyway, in, in the meantime, I have learned some little basic things about jetting. Number one, if you're a little bit wrong, a little bit wrong on the rich side, didn't ruin anything. But what happened when Luciano and I bought the bike, and Luciano is very knowledgeable about jetting. He had a TZ250, and he's had a lot of track time, a lot of track time. So he knows the do's and don'ts. He gave me some pointers. We we changed the pilot jet. We changed and a pilot jet on a on a street bike is critical because you want it to idle nice and not surge and do all these things. So in the meantime, what I did, and it's very much to my advantage, I took a notebook and took notes of everything we did. I did business with Sudco, bought a lot of jets, a lot of I have extra needles and slides and clips and everything. And what I did, I made what I thought the bike went for. A whole summer where we were riding it almost every day when Luciano had his two strokes and I had mine. So what happened back then, and it was, I was very attuned to this. And what happened? I got the bike set up very nice and we rode for five years. I didn't touch the bike. Now I've gone back and changed the pipes back to the stock pipes. But luckily for me, I have all the notes and all the jets from the stock jetting. And since it's warming up, it was over 60 degrees the other day, I want to put the what I call the summer jetting, or pretty much stock, it's stock plus one jet size. So I never want to be on that lean side. That's the lesson to learn. If it's, if it's perfect or one notch rich, nothing bad's going to happen. When it's one notch lean, you, you could have a matching piston to the one I have down a cellar. Now with four strokes, <laughs> you almost never fool with the jetting. The ones that come like this bike, they come from the factory with relatively lean jetting. But unless you track day in them, there's no reason to fool around with it. But that's not true with a two-stroke. With a two-stroke, if it gets, I call it summer weather, and you have relatively rich jetting, it gets too rich in the summer. And you lose, you lose that edge of the, the performance. Because the two-strokes are just more critical, in my estimation, more critical to the jetting. But on the RD, it's critical to get the pilot jet right, get the idle right, get all of that stuff right, and you can do it all in one day. We're going to do it today. And when Luciano and, I, Luciano and I were doing track days, and he was track day in his TZ250, I remember many times thinking, mm, are we going to be putting a piston in today? And No, but he was pretty good about getting the jetting right and always keeping it one, one little jet size rich. Now what helps me a little bit in doing any kind of jetting is from over 50 years of needle valve, most model planes have a needle valve, not a main jet, and you're constantly adjusting it. And if you, if you do that with a model plane, you realize you get the needle valve set in the morning when it's 50 degrees and it goes to 80, you got to change it. Well, with a motorcycle, you can't change it. You got to set it for the mean average. And that's what gets a little tricky with doing these jets. And to be fair, I think I've seen every Makuni jetting video that's on YouTube. Most of them are pretty good. A lot of them are really good. And if you become a student of jetting, now I'm not. I don't pretend to be. And, and I only have to maintain one two-stroke bike in my collection where Luciano has, I don't know, four or five of them. So, and on some bikes, it's critical. Some bikes, not so critical. But on an RD, it's, e it's relatively easy to do, straightforward. And maybe the information on this will be of some value. But again, this is not a video that would replace one of the Makuni jetting videos. This is just what I do on my own personal bike. So the first thing is to change the fish's, the fish's main jet here. Come on, boys. Time to eat. We got main jets to change. We got pilot jets to change. Let's get those needles in the right position. Keep going. I know you really can't see it, but this is the beginning of a zinnia, and that is, yeah, there's another one coming up right there. Now, the reason we're excited 
is this is this is we can't go to a garden center this year most of them are closed not all of them but most of them are and we're gonna we're gonna try something i've never done never done before nanda nivola will be impressed we're gonna try to grow everything from seeds i'll give it a try anyway and karen and i every year this time of year we would go to a garden center and then buy everything well i don't know how this seedling thing is going to work out but Boy, it's a crappy day. I'm glad we had those riding days when we did. And that's that's one of the things you could learn from the video. When any day you can ride, ride, because they aren't unlimited. This is in Southern California. Okay, it's time to get started. Time to time to cut bait, um, cut main jets and fish. And I keep this. This is this is the RD piston from the ride to Joris Heli. Look at it. You can put your finger in it. But this is why. If you don't know anything about jetting, it's worth learning something. Anyway, two strokes do that. Before I get out to the shop and start my jetting thing, this is a sign that our neighbor yesterday donated to us. And we, I, I spray painted this because I want to thank the healthcare workers. Try And several people on our block already have put up handmade signs. I'm going to add my name to that list today. It's pretty funny. Tur Turbo Steve doesn't know he donated the, the paint to this project. Uh, Turbo Steve's red. Actually, it came out pretty good. I, I think we're going to be happy having that out on a lawn. I feel good about it. Hand lettered. Glad I don't have to do that for a living. So here's some very handy things when you have a, a project like this to do. This would always tell me what the stock jetting was, is, and from my notebook, the things that I've already done. And when I've done them. So I have a little tray of needles and jets for basically each bike and as you probably have guessed I have fooled around especially with the FCR and trying to do whatever we do that uh, trying to always make the make it just run just a little bit better. In the case of a two-stroke it's a little more labor-intensive but but the results are a lot of fun. Now, of course, we know what the stock jetting was, and we can always go back to that, but what, what this is, whenever you disturb the air filter, change the air filter, change the air box, what I did, and we did some interesting tests up by Luciano's house one day. I had stacks and air filters and foam filters and whatever, and we were doing jetting, and he was jetting his bike, and anyway, we had these, what, what, what I was very careful to do is make notes for everything. So now, when it comes time, when I put the stock bufflers back on, at least I have a good starting spot. There's no racer I know that ever raced RDs that didn't have a box full of jets, but this is what we're really concerned with today is the pilot jets. Because we're riding a bike on the street and getting a pilot jetting, and the adjustment and the carburetor's balance is, is very, very important for riding on the street. At least I've found. If you're going to race, what you're really mainly going to be concerned with is the main jet, because you're going to be running, especially with an RD, it's going to be wide open almost all the time. Now, one thing I find I can't live without at my age is the, uh, the magnifier, because the, the things that are on these jets are so small. Okay, so even on the main jet, sometimes they, they just get very difficult to read. And we've had such a variety of jets in this bike over the years. We've had them way bigger and way smaller and with various modifications because I have other heads for the bike and I had a rejet. And the pipe, the pipes and the air filter are the main thing. So I'm looking. Boy, it's my lucky day here. I have plenty of... <laughs> Plenty of stuff to just fool around with you. But, but what happens is you get your eyes get so bad you can hardly see. Now there's a couple of things you never, I have been told never to do. And in my hard, hard love learning curve, I've learned that they, they're probably true. And one of them is you never take a jet and try to re-drill it. That's, even, I even have jet drills, but these have to be so accurate and so clean or you're not going to get maximum performance. Pilot jets, even more critical. Now, as I've looked at these, now these have, these have not been in a motorcycle in a while, and I, I am tempted to want to run a, a wire or something through there, but a better thing is I'm going to take some carb cleaner and I'm going to clean them and then I'm going to soak them. I'm going to get a little lid or something. And close your eyes when you do this. 
I'm not sure how much this is going to clean out, but I'm going to soak these. Oh, that, a lot better. But they really do, the worst thing to do is go try to take a, uh, and Chuck told me a great, and, and he's a two-stroke guy, he told me a great little tip is you take a fishing, that clear plastic fishing line and fish it through there, but never metal because you put swirls in it and it doesn't it doesn't meet it to fuel. Keep in mind, these are precision, precision things. They're not like you hit it with a sledgehammer things, which I'm used to doing. I'm used to stuff that you just hit with a hammer or put a bigger wrench on it or something. So I'm going to get a little cap and soak these, hopefully, and then blow them out with some compressed air so that these, while I'm taking a bike apart, these can all be soaking and they'll be clean when I put them back in a bike. So they'll be soaking in some, what is this, AutoZone carburetor cleaner, just to make sure they're as clean as can be before I put them in. So this can be soaking while I'm pull. First thing now is to pull one of the carbs off the bike. So there's a couple of things make this a little bit easier. They're having a center stand because the bike is sitting up. Otherwise, when it's leaning the other way, doing that carburetor can be a chore. This one, usually you've got a hose clamp on both ends, unscrew the cap, disconnect the fuel line, and this may be a time I'm going to see how hard those fuel lines are. If they're rock hard, it's better to heat them with a hairdryer and replace them. We don't know until I start to take this apart how that's going to be. And the good news is most of the work on these bikes, relatively simple. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, but you do have to be careful, and in the case of carburetors, you don't want to get any dirt in anything. You don't want anything to be dirty or not clean or whatever. So this is, and I always try not to pinch the cable. Of course, that's a little easier said than done sometimes. You've got to get that out of the way. And there we go. And not to scratch the needle. And there you have that. Now, we're going to check where the needle is set. Usually I would set it whatever would be when I'm doing a change like this I'd put it in the middle when it's in the middle then you have some variation going up and going down so this is there's a relatively straightforward adjustment to do that but the first thing is you got to get get the needle out so to get the needle out pull a spring back and all of this there's, there's so many good Makuni videos and you can actually take this off at the same time and you've got this support but but the thing is if you're careful and you and you keep notes this is this is like part of owning a two-stroke now another thing i always do i only work on one carburetor at a time then i never have i never have the the chance that i'm going to mismatch parts or put the wrong cap on the wrong side or i like to get one carburetor done put it back and then flip to the other side so now the next thing is to be loosen up the two hose clamps and there's a few there's a balance line for the choke back here and the fuel line let's see if that fuel line yeah, that fuel line might be might be okay and then pull that carburetor right off now i've always found and luciano and i did this together we had 20 different kind of filters and foam filters and this and that and yes you could get probably a half a horsepower more or some more power but for a street bike that we're going to basically ride on the street, the best setup was always the stock air cleaner. And the later models of RDs have a balance tube, and you can buy a kit to retrofit that. That's one of the things I thought might be worth doing, but I, ab I haven't done it yet. So that makes that an easy decision. Now, we're very carefully, I've got to take this. I've got it safety wired. Let me show this. I've got to break the safety wire and then take that oil line off. So let me just show this. This is on my bike, safety wired on. And I, just for my own, uh, well, peace of mind, I'll replace that safety wire, of course. That'll allow me to pull this oil line off the oil that comes from the oil pump. Now, once that's off, I'll, of course, replace the safety wire. And I wanted to just show that that does plug in. And, of course, yeah, maybe you don't need the safety wire, but I sleep better at night knowing that that's safety wired in there. I don't know why. So basically from this point on, you can either remove the, the rubber hose to the air filter, which I tried to work around. Sometimes you have to take the air filter hoses off, and this, this will eventually, if, you, if, you're, if it's your lucky day, I should say, 
it'll come right out. You just gotta get past this. My God, it's almost like a GS. You've gotta get past that rubber hose. Okay, there it is. Whoop. And there it is. There's our baby, but it's full of fuel now. So obviously I'm gonna go dump that fuel into a can. I don't want it on my workbench. Now this is a good time to retorque all the bolts while we have it apart. Clean the bottom of the engine here if there's any oil residue or anything spilling. Check that, and then without this, this is the oil supply line. Without this, uh, no good things are going to happen. And of course, there's one on the other side too. So, but to you know, really be careful about this. And at the end of this, we'll check the oil pump setting at full throttle. There's two marks. We can check that very easily. And we're going to try to, if we have time today, check the timing and balance the carburetors. So what I did, I just dumped the gas in the lawnmower, since it already has the two-stroke oil in it. I'm cleaning this up. I sprayed it really thoroughly with uh, that AutoZone carburetor cleaner just to clean it up. I just like working on things that are clean. I, I'm not sure there are people around that say, gee, I'd much rather work on stuff that's all dirty and rusty. But I'm not one of them. So I can only tell you what boats my float. Anyway, that's pretty clean now. Now the next thing is, and so truth in advertising here, let's take the float bowl off. And four Phillips screws. Usually, you've got to be very careful taking this off because there's a gasket in there. And I just want to break each one first. I don't want to damage that gasket. I do have extras, but I don't want to use them. I'm trying not to save these parts. Not to, since these carbs don't leak, it's uh, to my advantage to take care of them. And actually, I really, at, at some point in this video, I have, I might as well do it right now while I'm unscrewing these carbs. I have to thank Luciano for all the help he's been. Kenny, the late Kenny Augustine, all the help he was in, right next door to his factory, his, uh, his speed shop in California, was a jet company that made jets. So whenever I needed some jets, Kenny was... More than happy to just walk over and uh, get me another one of those jet kits. I probably I probably have a thousand dollars for the jet kits here. Let's see if there's sometime you have to tap it. And by the way, thank you to all the people. There's some great Bakuni uh, videos out on YouTube. I think I've watched them all, and they're all pretty good. This one's not over yet. And it's relatively easy to look inside now and see. Now, this looks pretty clean. I'm amazed. This looks very clean. There's no dirt at all in there. But, of course, we clean this every time we change the jetting. So there's the main jet. I want to make sure everything's clean around it. I don't have any problems with, boy, oh, boy, do I. I don't want to, right now, I want to check the floats that they don't have any liquid in them. I can shake them in here. That would be a problem. I don't want to disturb that setting. That's the setting in the back. And this is basically uh, we're gonna, where we're going to start. So by taking the main jet out, and these were absolutely clean the last time. I just want to do my little double check. I can look right through them. Yeah, they're still nice and clean. And Everything looks clean. It, it may be our lucky day, but I'm still going to get a Q-tip and clean around here because there's always, usually you can use, let me just get a Q-tip here. Let's clean around here. While you have something apart, it's crazy not to clean it. This is absolutely crazy. Okay, so we have that clean. Now we have the main jet out. We can take the float bowl off, the pin comes out, carefully take this out, and now you can see, shake it, and if you don't hear any liquid, you're good to go, and you don't want to disturb that little tang, assuming everything was okay. Now, I see there is a little bit of goop under here, so as long as we have it apart, that's all stuff that can work its way down into the jet, and now, the little Viton tip. Since this carburetor had no problem with the shutoff at all, I don't want to 
disturb that or make anything a problem that isn't a problem now. Everything looks absolutely clean. Now what I usually have to do is get a, a screwdriver and grind it. I'm sure they make a Makuni tool or something to loosen that up. And once that's loose, you can take the pilot jet out. And there was some, some crap in there, believe it or not. The Viton tip came out. And right there is the whole, the whole low end of the motorcycle, the pilot jet. That is the one that if you're a street bike rider, a racer is always concerned with getting the main jet right. Street bike rider, the pilot jet. Because most of the time you're just cruising around at eighth throttle or anything under eighth throttle. This is the one that's controlling everything. And that's why you have that, that bleed screw so that you can get a fine-tuned mixture. And I'll do that as the last thing after this is all cleaned and back on a motorcycle. Okay, so the one we're replacing it with, I blew it out with carburetor cleaner. And again, this is one of the joys of cleaning carburetors. You wind up with, and I can't do this with gloves on, so I just have to pay the price, take one for the team, make sure that's in there. Now, not so tight that you can never get it out again. It's brass. And having this dedicated screwdriver, just, that's it. Now, even after that's done, I want to blow some stuff through there. Always close your eyes when you use this pressure stuff. First time you get that in your eyes, you'll be a believer. And the new main jet goes right back in there. Easy peasy. That's just about as good as it gets. And whenever I'm done any one of these, I don't want to make them so tight that I strip them. And when I'm done, close your eyes and just... Now, this, I would have, while I have this open... Just get some of that through there clean. All right, we can take this and put this back in here. It's kind of kind of simple, and like I said, there's so many really good videos on on a YouTube. From I think they're made by. There's a guy in Australia made some real informative ones, and some I found them informative anyway. And. Always good to, what I, my, my thing is always when I'm going to do a job I'm not totally familiar with, like replacing the ice maker on my refrigerator, I always check out YouTube first. Okay, so we've got that side. I'm, I'm just going to take a little, more, a little more effort at getting everything clean. While I have it apart, I want those gaskets to seat. I want that Viton tip to seat real nice. And again, Luciano found some place that if you need these gaskets... It was on Route 23. The guy had some kind of machine that he could cut these gaskets. And when you can't buy them, I know you can buy replacement ones, but it's just one of the things that's unique to these old bikes. And if you don't enjoy that, <laughs> what's the point? And the last little thing here, I want to make sure that nothing, anything that's a little passageway or anything that has a hole in it, I try to blow some air through it. And a little bit of carburetor cleaner, a little bit of air, and all I can all I can say is now these screws I want to torque down, just like you would torque down the head of an engine, crisscross pattern. And we will be ba we're basically at the end of having one carb done. Then it'll be a question of putting this one back. Oh, I have to check the need to where the needle location is. As the last thing but again all this stuff is pretty straightforward and it's all part of two-stroke tuning if you're a two-stroke guy it's it's good information and actually it's the, the thing that's good about it is it's not rocket science I, having an engine if you have a model airplane engine it's either too rich or too lean there's only one little tiny spot on a needle where it's absolutely at peak power and you can see some of the pylon racers going crazy not a final little uh, 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 and it's out well, it's a thing i personally enjoy the challenge of keeping 43 year old motorcycles running people that don't i know dale does eh, there's other people i know but luciano does keeping these old bikes out in service and not not that they're just in somebody's uh, showroom 
or a, you know, I Dale's a museum guy, but I want to ride these damn things. I want to ride the wheels off them. I don't want to ride around like I got a gold wing. I want to ride around like I, like I'm a motorcycle rider. Now I'm going to eventually. I'm not going to do it today, but I can see these fuel lines are getting a little rough. I'm going to get new fuel line. I'll order that today from. I can get that from any of the, the sources. Usually Amazon even has it, but. I found this plastic line lasts three, four, five years, but the rubber lasts forever. Now I'm going to replace everything with black rubber. I always thought this was, I think I got this from Luciano, but I'm not sure. But the rubber is a better choice if you have a choice for real rubber. All right, that's pretty much ready. Now we got to do the slide, and that's ready to put back on the motorcycle. And so there's two screws in here that allow us to pull a needle out conveniently and I, the only thing I've ever found is if you're using a wrong size screwdriver and you strip these screws it's it's not in your favor that's for sure these are soft metal screws as they they don't need to be case hardened grade eights or anything okay so we have the needle out the little retainer the little retainer and kind of intuitive how that goes when you put it back together two screws and we have the needle now the needle right now is one notch from the top I'm gonna to put it in the middle remember I'm setting the bike up as what I think according to my notes work good in the past with those mufflers and I'm just using my own reference and the biggest problem you can have is you drop the need these on the floor you know, I always use my my trusty loop to do this and now we're in the middle and that's going to give us the most flexibility to fine-tune in the near future and the nice thing about this to change this I don't even have to take the carbs off the bike I can do it all without taking the carbs off the bike just unscrewing the cap so now the next thing is going to be to put this all back together not not really any different than taking it apart in reverse in fact I want to get a just being the fanatic that I am, I just like to have everything clean. In my jetting, I always keep a little piece of tubing that holds the head of the screw. This just makes it easier. Unless you have the little, again, that old thing of the little tiny fingers, that holds the screw. And while you, when you're lining these parts up, it, it just, it's difficult for me to keep the screwdriver in place. What this does, it just gets them started okay you get both screws in there and then you can finish it off with the screwdriver that matches the head and it's that's a great little tip by the way that's a tip worth watching one of these whole videos i love watching a video and i almost never don't get it i watch somebody else work and i see how they use their tools how they do things how they that's nice and solid that's ready to reinstall the, the throttle cable goes down into that little contained area. We are good to go. Now pretty much this just becomes a, a reverse everything. Let me do this clamp. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reverse everything. Make sure we don't leave any anything undone. And make sure the clamp is plenty big. May want to take the air box piece off. I'm not sure yet. Let's see if it's our lucky day. You never know when it's your lucky day. Oh, that went right in there. So a couple little tips I found that make, make it a lot easier. Don't, of course, get the hose clamp way up off of there if you're going to try to do it with the, with the pipe, with that part. And there's a little tang up there. Otherwise, the carbs don't line up straight, and I'm, I'm making sure I'm right in that tang. We're in that tang. Now I can put the hose clamp back on. It's easier with the hose clamps completely off. See where there's nothing restricting it. When, if you leave the hose clamp up here, or the hose clamp here, which I just did, it just makes it more difficult. And you can get it, but it's just difficult to do it. So having that in place now, now I can put the clamps on. The next thing will be, and then we'll get the oil feed line on, the fuel line, and it's just a question of going reverse, reverse engineering this whole thing. Okay, with the clamps tight, the 
oil feed line. That's going to get safety wired again, that's for sure. Our fuel line, which I know I'm going to replace, I'm going to get some new fuel line and I'm going to get, I noticed, it, this probably is still soft enough, but I always like to, while I have things apart, I wish I had ordered it ahead of time, in fact. We're going to chuck the setting on the oil pump and we're ready to put the cable back in. Now this can always be, it's always a nuisance. And I'm looking at the cable here, uh, and I think I'm going to put a little grease on that cable. Uh, I think that would be a good thing to do before I go any further. Just put a little grease on it. That cable is dry. Yes, yeah, a little bit of grease. Uh, never, never will hurt anything. All right, so now we got some grease on the cable. We've got our piece on there. We've got our spring, which now this gets to be tricky as can be too, but nothing you can't do. The trick is you just have you just need eight fingers and it's it's no problem at all. That has to go into the little detent there. And once in a while it goes and once in a while it doesn't. And if it doesn't, you've got to use a little forcep or something to get it in. Let's see if it's my lucky day. Does not have the does not have the look of Wendy's lucky day here so far. There it is. Always Wendy's lucky day. Ah, it comes out. Oh, ay, 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 ay. See, this is. Let's start all over again. Let's start all over from gr from ground zero here. Put this in. Put this in. Get as much of this sticking out as you possibly can. Grab it with your grease-soaked fingers and try to get it to go into that little detent. When you hear it click, you know you got it. And there you do. And now we've got to snake it back in there. Now there's a, there's a, a notch that this has to go in on the other side. So. You've got to make sure that little notch lines up. And we should be good to go with one side. I pull that little boot down. And of course that's, we're going to check all the settings on this, but for right now, there we go, one side is done. Now the other side is pretty much the same and I noticed I have a clear fuel line here so I know I want to replace that and among other things but rather than make this whole video too redundant I'll do this one off camera and then we'll come back to this when it's time to reset everything. And Karen just reminded me that uh, it's time for a coffee break. How convenient. And everybody that does this kind of work knows the second one will go quicker than the first one. But then, it always does. As we get ready for a coffee break, it looks like the rains are coming again. It rained this morning and it does not look a lot better this afternoon. I'm not missing a riding day for this. This will make the second cylinder go in about a third the time. Nothing, nothing speeds up production more than a, co a, a cup of good coffee. Now after a good coffee break, the easiest way for me to do this, since there's so little room, see if I try to work on this side of the motorcycle, you're bumping at everything. So it's easier for me and under these conditions, just turn the motorcycle around. Now before I start the other side, I thought I'd mention something. When I first got the bike, I put a set of Iridium plugs and bought a set of spares. And those plugs are $10 a piece. I bought them from Circle Cycle. And I thought, I asked Pete, do you think they're worth it? And he said, yeah, they probably are. Well, you know, it's been, and I'm trying to get an idea how many miles, uh, 16, 7. It's, it's over 9,000 miles I've put on a bike, and I've never even had the plugs out. And again, I always like to think, second side always goes faster, but then sometimes that's not true. We're going to find out. Okay, the second one did come out a little a little quicker. Got to go dump the gas in a lawnmower. Now with the carbs off, a little bit of 
carburetor cleaner in here. I'll get this totally clean. Showroom clean. And I'll just blow this out with some compressed air. To do the final, make sure this is ready to go. Well, the usual thing, it is going faster, I guess by some amount. A couple of very useful tips if you have an RD. There's a connecting piece of tubing between the two carbs, and it's very difficult unless you have little baby hands and, uh, you know, you're an octopus or something to get that on. But one of the things that makes it easy, just take it out and heat it with a hairdryer just a little bit so it's very soft and it's a lot easier to get on. Same thing with any of these fuel lines. These are gone. I'm going to get rubber fuel lines for sure. Now, another thing, the first time I turn the fuel on, I want to always have a towel underneath the bike. Because if there's something, if there's a little bit of debris under one of those little Viton tips, or anything the equivalent of that, what'll happen, you'll see the gas dripping out. And if the gas is dripping out, of course, you got a mess in your garage, your house, wherever. Now, in looking through my supply of tubing, I realized one of the things I have, I've got some rubber fuel line. So I'm going to, before I even start the engine, I'm going to replace all the fuel line with some nice, fresh, new rubber and replace the overflow lines. I even have some clear, the overflow lines or just anything, just so it doesn't drip gas and oil down on the engine. That, I forgot I had that. And the last little detail is to safety wire up those oil pipes because what happens if that oil pipe for some reason pops out or you, you're wiping a bike off and you pull it out, it's a very easy press fit. It's really, I can't believe that more engines haven't been ruined. And if you don't have oil in the fuel then, that engine's got a very limited lifespan in a matter of minutes. You're going to be fried. So for me, again, this is one of the things I, and I'm sure when these bikes were new, this was a better press fit, but... Right now, it's a pretty sloppy press fit, to be honest. And I just get nervous. I sleep better at night with some safety wire on that. That is truly cheap insurance. And boy, that's better than a sleeping pill at night. And if you've ever had a two-stroke that's seized up while you're going 100 miles an hour, you'll know. You'll know. <laughs> That's a cheap insurance. So we reached the part of the day that I was waiting for all day. We're all safety wired up, new fuel lines, new overflow lines, everything's, I hope it's gonna start. <laughs> anyway, and actually the sun came out so we'll be able to go outside and balance the carburetors out. What a miracle, what a day. And I always think by keeping those notes and keeping all those little sets of main jets, just, it works in my favor when you want to do some summer tuning, and summer is coming. So the first thing is kind of old school, put your hands by the pipes, see that they're both kind of equal. And since we've already had this bike idling pretty much the way it should, I got the idle around 1300, between 11 and 13 is where they want it. And now we're ready to adjust the pilot screws. So the objective here is to see by screwing this in at what point the RPMs drop right off. Now you can hear it's you can, it's actually shut off. So I know that I'm going to go out a half a turn, start the bike, and see if at a half a turn. It uh, probably what I have to do here, and I should know this from doing this a million times, is you got to let the bike the bike settle down and just start to to find its RPM. But let me just say what the objective is here. You're the old school way, or the way McCooney says to do it, is you get the bike in the middle. We're at, at, at a turn and a half out. Now, if you have to go in beyond one, say you have to go to three quarters of a turn to get it to drop, you've got the wrong pilot jet in the bike. Now. If we have to go out more than three, you've got the wrong pilot jet in the bike. So let's say we turn this down and it, it shuts off at one and it shuts off at three. What we do is we put it at the mean average of two. And that's supposed to be, now I know everybody has their little tuning secrets and their little tuning ways, but this is the way, now years ago, the only bikes 
that I ever fooled with. I'm going to go back out to one and a half. You're supposed to do it in half inch increment, half turn increments. And at some point, you let the bike sit, it'll start to drop and idle. And now, of course, <laughs> it, it takes time to do this. I don't want to make a two hour video out of this. But, and it's kind of a straightforward thing. But I, the first thing you have to do, no matter what you do, the idle has to be right. You can't adjust the main jet if the idle's wrong. It, you, this is the first thing, because this is what's going to work. This is the part of the bike that works 90% of the time. You're at the bottom and just cruise. You're not, unless you have a race bike. Now, if it's a race bike, all you got to do is worry about the main jet and make sure those caps are down. So what I've already done is hold the, held the throttle wide open, and there's two little access points. I've already done this. And you can look inside and see a little dot. The dot has to be right at the bottom. And that balances out the cable. Then we have to adjust, take the oil pump cover off, make sure the line and the dot line up on the oil pump side. And that I've already done. So the, the last thing I'm not going to be able to do today, because I need to have Luciano around, I want to do the timing. And I can do it with a timing light. And that's pretty, I can even do that tomorrow or something. But I don't think the timing's off. But he does it with a dial gauge. It's very, very accurate, way more accurate than a timing light. And of course, he's always willing to help, so he's an A-teamer. So, I guess we're going to fool around with this idle. I want to get this to idle perfectly, and I think that'll be pretty straightforward. I think I've shared the information that'll be useful to everybody. Well, I hope anyway. Now I'm going to do exactly what they say. I'm at one and a half. I'm going to go to one. And give it 30 seconds, and if it starts to drop off, I know one is the bottom end. And actually, I can do the both of them at one. And I'm just going to give it 30 seconds. You hear the arc? Everything is starting to fall down there. Uh, I guess that's 30 seconds. Now I'm going to go another half. And there you have, okay, so the, we know the bottom of this is gonna be one. The bottom where it's gonna idle decently is one. I can put that back. Now I'll go the opposite way. And it's gonna wind up probably at three, and then our mean average is gonna be two. That's roughly what it's gonna be. But that averaging out, now what that does, it takes into account some days are gonna be colder, some are gonna be hotter. So it's a, it's a good way to do it. A little time consuming. Eh, and sometime if you're in a rush to go for a ride, well, <laughs> I'm always in a rush to go for a ride. So what I'm going to do is open this now, a half a turn. Give it 30 seconds. Again, this is, there's a lot of, I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but this way has always been the way I was taught how to do it. And I don't know if there is a better way. Share it on YouTube, please. Okay, I'm gonna go out another half a turn. But it looks like we're already in that, we're in the sweet spot already. Give it 30 seconds, some amount of time anyway. But the hardest thing with any of these is to get a beautiful idle and then have it take the gas right off idle. And when you're decelerating, not have any excessive surging, where it's, it's constantly surging. And it takes a little fiddling around, but, but that's the fun of a two-strat. That's, that's the, uh, what makes it different than just go buy a bike. All right, I'm gonna go out again. We're gonna have this by the end of the day. It just gets, it's a little time consuming. Here, it's starting to stumble a little bit, starting to stumble. Here, it's stumbling a little bit now. 
So what I'm thinking is my low end was one turn out, my high end is three turns out, it's gonna wind up at two. And at two, it should idle up between 1100 and 1300. Well, at two turns out in today's weather, of course, getting hotter or colder could change a slight amount. We've averaged out with those screws out about two turns. And we're right at about, they recommend 1300 to 1100. We're right at 1200. I would say that's mission accomplished. Sort of bottom line here today is we did a lot of work on this in the last week, two weeks. I, I don't know how. But every time I do something to improve this bike, I think I've prolonged its life beyond its 43 years now. I love seeing, it's still a fun bike to ride. It's really a fun bike to ride. Anyway, we've got a uh, 16, well, I've got 9,000 miles on it since I bought it. It's It's been great as far as being reliable and fun and that's why I don't, I don't begrudge any of the time I spend doing little things like today. Now, I still have to get it up to Luciano's and do that timing thing and uh, I hope he'll be available. Well, maybe he's not available, who the hell knows. But uh, in the meantime, if I had to, I could put a timing light on it. I have not the kind that goes around the, the ignition wire. But basically, if, when you maintain a bike and keep up with it and constantly checking it and constantly lubing the chain and checking it, it never gets terrible. So that's what I like about this is it's, it's fun working on it because it never gets terrible. It never gets like to be a rust bucket that you don't even want to touch. And you, yeah, it's hard to believe. Anyway, we, we did have an unexpectedly uh, nice day in the afternoon, but I wanted to get this done. And we'll see tomorrow what the next step is, what we can ride, how the weather's going to play out, whatever. So anyway, I hope this little jetting thing worked out to your favor. Mm, figuring out the right main jet, we'll, when we get a ride, I'll, I'll know right away if it's rich or lean from all those model airplane needle valves. Anyway, hope you did enjoy the video. And again, I want to thank, thank those workers that have made this possible. I have that sign. I'm going to put it out on my front lawn right now and that'll be the end of this video so again thanks for watching so we really do thank the uh the healthcare workers that sign worked out great oh there's the beautiful karen ertnowski next to our beautiful flowering cherry tree <laughs> i really do thank those people and they allow me to stay home and work on motorcycles because i don't know anything about the coronavirus just stay home stay sequestered